Hello everybody, Mr. Arm here, and welcome back to Final Fantasy XIV Online. The last episode, we reported back to Minfilia about the results of our investigations in Little Alamigo. And kind of the dead end we ran into there. Uh, but uh, she thinks we should stay on this subject. So we are out here at Fallgord Float following some more reports. Uh, that there may be uh, someone who might be an Askian out here. Uh, we've been working with some of the locals to see if we can't uh, find some information. So far, nothing has really panned out. But we might um, have something. There are reports of uh, several murders in the area and sightings of a giant winged eyeball uh, accompanying a man robed in black. So, we now need to search for a Maiden's Corpse, west of Falgord. Alright, so he's now convinced it was Winged Eyeball he encountered. There will well be another victim out there waiting to be discovered. The three fiends, our three friends, would leave the task of investigating to the expert, me. Okay, so, we're going to head on out there and see what we find. So let's go ahead and mount up. I am planning to begin shifting my chocobo's color again soon. I'm probably going to make it white for a while. That should be cool. There are all kinds of like calculators online to, to let you know what you need to feed your chocobo to change it different colors. Um, so that's... You know, if you're wondering about that, you know, it's not that difficult. The hardest thing is coming across the actual uh, foods that you need. Because um, they can be sort of expensive to buy on the market. Um, Alright, all these is around here. Oh, oh we got to fight that one. Alright, there we go. And here is a mangled corpse, and when you see this, it means we're gonna be attacked as soon as we walk in. There we are, and there's the winged eyeball. Alright, let's hit our uh, cooldowns. Wow, Floating Eye is actually a hunt target. Alright, let's investigate the corpse. Search for Maiden's Corpse west of Fulgorn. Present the Ravaged Corpse to Athelmare. Oh, another one of these quests where we're going to be carrying around dead bodies. Stick behind the Bane Might so they don't see me. Alright. Athelmare, the Serpent Sergeant in charge of Fall Gord. Greetings, Adventurer. Is there aught I might assist you with? Um, I found this dead body. Gods be good, not again. No matter how many bodies I see, I cannot seem to get used to the Horde sight. Poor woman. Identical deaths have been reported in the Central Shroud, while the masked stranger you seek does not seem to feature in any sightings of the winged eyeball are common enough. The creature appears to be moving the bodies, but to what end, none can say. The victims all have been young women. All are found with their faces mutilated beyond recognition. It's been difficult to identify them, so as to notify their next of... Hmm. This button, engraved with a lily motif. 
The very same object was found upon another victim, a family sigil or that of an organization, perhaps. Either way, I dare to hope that this find will prove pivotal in solving the murders. Alright, so let's see what you have to say about this button. I would have you hold on to the lily button. You will need it to continue your investigation. While it isn't standard procedure to entrust key evidence to individuals, you have proven yourself reliable and resourceful in this matter. I see no reason why you shouldn't carry on your work. If I might have a suggestion, you may wish to take the button to Gridania and have it examined by Mion. Mayhap someone in her vast network of contacts can shed light upon its sigil. Alright, so we need to head back into Gridania and talk to Mother Mune in the Adventurer's Guild. So let's go ahead and hop back there. Only six of those tickets left, and I have to start paying full price for my teleports. Can we, like, register this as a favored destination? Yeah. So I think that we have Ulda set as a free one and Limsa as our return point. So now we have this as a favored, which should hopefully make it less expensive. All right. And actually, there's one other thing we can do. Uh, sec. I can execute a free company action, which will reduce my teleportation rates as well. Alright, let's see what Mother Mion has to say here. Good day to you, Yame. By your grim expression, I suggest you aren't here for scones and herb tea. No, we are not. Well, isn't this a lovely little button? The engraving is quite exquisite. Artisan level quality, I would say. Where did you say you found this? On a dead body? Lovely. Anyway, I'm afraid I'm not recognized the Lily Sigil. You will have to find the answer the old-fashioned way, by asking around. You could do worse than beginning with Bernadette over by the 8th Ray Plaza. She has a sharp pair of eyes, that one. Alright, so let's find this Bernadette. There she is. Need help tracking down the owner of a button? That's certainly not a request I receive on a regular basis. Well, go on then, show me what you have. Let's hand that over. Hmm, seems to be some manner of decorative button reminiscent of those worn by the females of old, though I cannot claim to know its sigil. However, I can say with certainty that the White Lily is a recurring theme in Gridanian culture. Alas, I do not know who would make a personal sigil of it. If there is a soul in Gridania who does, it would be Sangulid. Sangulid? Over the Lancers Guild, the woman makes a point of knowing all the citizens on a forename basis. Alright, so over to Old Gradania. Exactly where in Old Gradania are we heading? The Lancer's Guild, right? Okay, so let's just use the Aethernet. Go to the Lancer's Guild. Singulate. Bernadette believes that I can help you? Well, that is a rather odd assumption to make. I will try to assist. Never you fear, but whether aught comes of it is another matter. Now then, what do you require of me? Uh, do you know anything about this button? Fascinating. Work of this quality is rarely seen in the hands of ordinary Gradanians. The owner of this button is most certainly well-to-do. You may wish to take your search to the Gentry's Ward 
northwest of here. Wait, a memory comes to me of late. Of late, there has been a man who is perpetually seated at the bench by the ward's entrance. His name is Ursandal, and I distinctly recall seeing a markedly similar button upon the breast of his jacket. I dare say he can tell you a thing or two about it. Very well. Let's go see. He's right over there. Sendel. I do not believe we are acquainted. Pray leave me to my thoughts. Um, I have this button you might know about. The sigil of the Durancor's family. Dartancor's family. How How is it you come to be in possession of this button? From the body of a murdered woman? Her face was marred? Oh, her face. Was it marred in any way? I had feared as much. I can no longer feign ignorance. I shall reveal to you the truth of the deaths, but on one condition. You promise to put an end to my lady's madness and free her from her torment. Okay. Ursandal? What's up? Sphine Earrings. Those actually would be very... No, actually, we have other earrings we're going to be using. So I will be taking silver piece. Because the earrings that I currently use are the Alamegan earrings, which give us a 30% EXP increase when we're below level 50, which is why we're leveling so quickly. Um, let's see what he has to say for himself. I was once a man servant in the employee of one of the oldest and proudest families in Gredania, the Dartoncores. During that time, I had the honor of waiting upon Lady Amandine, mistress of the household. Fair as summer was she, and possessed of a heart befitting her radiance. Alas, the calamity wrought a great change in her. Though my lady escaped with her life, death may well have been a kinder fate. Never will I forget the day her bandages were removed, and she beget, beheld her disfigured face for the first time. At that moment, a, a kindly woman I knew ceased to be. Unable to bear the thought of being seen, my lady sequestered herself within her chambers and refused all company. This continued for many uneasy moons until one day, without warning, she began receiving queer guests. None among us knew whence they came, these masked men, but my lady believed that they would help her regain that which she had lost. So began the, the rites of rejuvenation. These rituals seemed innocent enough in the beginning, but grew ever more grotesque as time went by. Eventually, there came a day when my lady bound one of her handmaidens to her bed and proceeded to mutilate the poor girl's face. Suffice it to say, she did not survive the ordeal. It fell to me to dispose of her body. I performed the dreadful task as bade, obedient servant that I was. But when the time came to return to the house, my legs refused to move. I knew then uh, that I could not go back to that place, not after the nightmare I had witnessed. So it was I left Hawk Manor, my home for nigh on a half a century. Long did I weep for the girl who was slain, and longer still for the woman that Lady Amandine had been. Yet, one cannot weep forever, and I endeavored to put the matter behind me. Indeed, I had resolved to never speak of my experience until you appeared before me. My lady's madness must be ended, lest more innocent lives be lost. Lay her tormented soul to rest, as you swore to me you would. She awaits you at Hawk Manor on the western edge of the central shroud. Go now. Go and do what must be done. All right. Seek entry into Hawk Manor. Just over there in the central shroud. Easiest way to do it is probably just teleport the bent branch.
Alright, let's mount up. Exactly, ah oh, yeah, down here. I've done this dungeon many times. Sometimes I forget where it actually is on the map. There's a fate over here for more bowls. Oh, and there's those floating eyes. Level 31 Stroper. Oh, I might have to fight you. Yep. Oh, I'm gonna get hit by that. Oh. <laughs> Look at all those negative status effects up here. Paralysis, silence, blind, slow, heavy. Yeah. If you get caught in that, it's not pretty. At least the poison's worn off, so we're no longer in the threat of dying. Oh, that was ugly. <laughs> Alright, we gotta resummon our chug boat because it got taken out. Am I still in that fate? Yeah, that's what I am. Alright. Alright. Floating Eye, you're next. Knock down two more of those. All right, one more from our hunt log. Hawk Manor is now accessible from the Duty Finder. Alright, is there anything else that we can get on with before we actually go in there? Uh, let me just see. Alright, well, it looks like that uh, this is going to be what we're going to do next. But there's one thing that I just noticed. Um, our companion Chocobo actually has uh, a level now. So we can give it some skills. And I think we're going to put it in healer stance. We're going to give him Chocobo Regen. And we have two more SP. And Enhanced Mind increases Companion Mind by 10%. Which improves its healing. And that means we should be able to put it in healing stance. Okay. So. Now our Chocobo is actually going to function as a healer. Let's see it's in healer stance. 
All right, but we're going to go ahead and duty up for Hawk Manor. Go ahead and join in. Once we used by the Seed Seekers as a place for spiritual reflection and meditation, uh, Hawk Manor was long frowned upon by the people of Gardenia as a symbol of excess. After years of protest, the building was finally sold to a wealthy dusk white by the name of Lady Amandine. While little is known the lady, it was said that she was exceptionally vain, and that to maintain her impeccable beauty, she would spare no expense, from facial creams concocted from rare coerthin honeys, to shampoos derived from the milk of exotic furbles. Her daily ritual of beauty treatments escalated until she was rumored, it was rumored she was bathing in the blood of her virgin maidservants. No amount of man-made tinctures, however, could hide the hideous scars she eventually suffered during the calamity, and soon she was forced to turn to a darker solution, signing away her very soul in a final effort to literally save face. All right, let's do it. Forming party, is it gonna pop right away? Our instance is reserved, we're just waiting for some people to show up. All right, well, I'm going to go ahead and pause the recording while I wait for everything to fill in. Once we're ready to go, I'll be back. All right, here we are, ready to go. Just waiting for the one DPS. There we go. We can't go up stairs because it's a sealed barrier. Alright, these things patrol, so I'm going to grab it. Defiance. There we go. New warrior functions that we haven't had to use in a dungeon yet. Right, grab the key. Generators, so we don't lose control of these guys.
They go down really quick. Okay. Alright, we didn't really need to come into that room. That's okay. I don't think I have any skills that actually use our little bar here yet. I've never played a warrior. strange. Right, I don't think we actually need to go to that door. Times now, they really shouldn't go anywhere. Uh -oh. oh, boy. That was unfortunate. Dead. Good. Ah, there's a key. Take care of these. Actually, no, we're gonna leave them there. Alright, here's our first boss. Manor Levige.
the slashing resistance. Deep off one. Nothing too complicated about this boss. We in the AoE. cycle of these and then we'll use the maim to put that slash of resistance back on again. And part up. Alright, there we are. A Ethereal Elm Makohutl. Pass on that. Actually, no, we need to head back this way. This dungeon's laid out a little weird. As you probably noticed, is that you know, this is the sequence here, these three that you use to generate threat. And so I'll hit one with basically it's these two that are the threat generators. So I hit one target with one, and I'll tab over, hit another target with a different one. Spread it around. Overpower at the beginning. Get over here. Over here. Tiny key. Grab that. Now I can't get through the carnation door yet. there's a key in there we're not gonna worry about it rampart takes some pressure off the healer
down. Hey, leveled up. Do we need to worry about those guys? I don't think so. If we miss something, we can always come back. Let's go to battle. Part. Some pressure off the healer. Or that attic bat. There we go. Thing. Yep, there's the yellow key. like to have him behind me. Oh. It's the, it's the white mage. He's using his knockaway skill on these mobs. It's that's a little irritating. All right, we can climb that. We don't need to worry about those guys. And that should allow us to open the carnation door. There we go. And then we have two enemies. I can never remember which one you want to kill first, but you know, you just gotta kill both of them. Go over here. Go over here. Power a bunch on them. And go into standard. That rotation. This should lock them down pretty well. The battle. Probably would want to kill that steward first because that AMP is a little annoying. Looks like they're working on the Jester first. And it ultimately doesn't really matter, but uh just 
probably would have been better if the steward had died first. A little less annoying. Alright, there we go. Treasure coffers. Let's hit them. I don't need that. And I don't need that. And then what we actually do here is we return. Because this will take us back to the entrance. Let's see if the white mage realizes what you're supposed to do. Yep, there it goes. Oh, did we not pick up what we need to pick up down there? Oh, we must have missed it. Alright, I'll be back as soon as someone picks that up. Alright, we got the bloody parchment. And uh, we can just wait for the uh, person to come back. It's not that long a run, really. So, we can catch up shortly. This thing is gonna run away. Probably, yep, yeah, there it goes. That's Lady Amandine's not good. Alright, well, we're waiting for our fourth. Here they come. At some point, there's going to be four lights around the corners of the room that someone has to go touch. There they are. Void lamp is again. And there's ads with the uh Power on a bunch of them. 
the uh, DPS really needs to deal with them. They're probably going to work on a burn strategy, just burn the boss. No, there's the handmaid to take her out. Alright, Rampart. Finish off the boss. Someone use a limit break? I guess they must have. Recommendation, we'll give it to the healer. Loot, dagger, don't care, gonna pass. Uh, they're all having good jokes about not someone who did not pick up the parchment in chat. Alright, let's head on out of here. Darkness has taken root within these wall these halls. Sprung from the most unlikely of seeds. One cannot help but admire the irrepressible spirit that quickened it to life. It is a pleasure to meet you at last, adventurer. You are every bit as intriguing as our master gave us to believe. There's no ordinary mortal who can acquire one crystal of light, much less three. The crystals make you strong, and it is to that strength the light is drawn. Heidelin chose well. A pity that your existence is irreconcilable with our own. We cannot well allow you to continue upon your present course. Alas, we came here not to play, but to take the measure of your strength for Master Lahabrea. That task is now accomplished. We take our leave of you. Fare you well, bringer of light. Alright, so we took out Lady Amandine, who had been turned into some sort of undead creature. And uh, now we need to report back to Ursandel. Again, fastest way to probably do that is just teleport. Where is he? Yeah, teleport. And the Lancers Guild Ethernet Shard is probably still the closest one to where we need to go. Uh, do we need repairs after that? Not really. All right, Ursendel. You are returned. What sights awaited you within the manor? What has become of Lady Amandine? You must tell me all. So she went so far as to consort with devils. Would that I could have done more to prevent her fall. May she finally rest in peace in the beyond. 
I know not whether the masked men you encounter are the same pair that first met my lady or first led my lady astray, but it is plain that they are of the same vile brood. Should the chance ever present itself, promise me that you will visit upon them tenfold the woe they have brought upon others. But who am I to speak of punishment? By my silence, I allowed I know not how many innocent young women to die in unspeakable circumstances. It matters not wherefore, through misplaced loyalty, cowardice, or both, I am an abettor to a gross crime. I will surrender myself to the authorities and accept whatever punishment they deem just. I only pray that the gods will have mercy on my soul. Alright, and now we need to report back to Minfilia, but we're going to go ahead and end the episode here. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Go ahead, like, subscribe, and comment, and I will see you next time.